Being 7 o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Baspis. Here. Commissioner Baker. Here. Commissioner Bauer. Here. Commissioner Gage. Here. Commissioner Gary. Here. Commissioner Lynn. Here. Commissioner Twardy. Here. Okay, we're all here. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. If those with uh, cell phones, if they would please put them on vibrate or uh, turn them off, we would appreciate it. Okay, uh, Assistant City Manager. The first item of business is swearing in of Commissioner Abby Baker. Okay. Ms. Baker wants to meet me at the podium. Have you raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear that I will uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of office of city commissioner in and for the city of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Sir, and on behalf of the commission, uh, again, like to uh, congratulate Abby Baker uh, uh, for garnering the seat, uh, the vacant seat, uh, and we look forward to uh, working with her for the next uh, two and a half years, at minimum, hopefully. Thank you. Okay, item number one or two, I should say. Oh, I'm sorry. My <laughs> public comment on scheduled agenda items. <laughs> Any person may reserve time to speak on an agenda item not to exceed three minutes per person. Is there anyone, anyone in the audience? Uh, if you could give us your name, Jason. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, item number three, the consent agenda. Under the consent agenda. A minute approval. One, approval of the minutes of the regular city commission meeting of May 15th, 2017, and the special city commission meeting of May 16th, 2017. Recommended action, approve the minutes of the regular city commission meeting of May 15th, 2017, and the special city commission meeting of May 16th, 2017. Item two is acceptance of the minutes of the following boards and commissions. A, downtown development authority of March 3rd and April 12th. B, Historic Structures Management Committee of May 24th. C, Osborne Trust Board of January 23rd. D, Planning Commission of May 11th. E, Seal Trust Board of January 23rd. F, Sault Ste. Marie Housing Commission of March 22nd. And G, Zoning Board of Appeals of April 20th. Recommended action is to accept the minutes of the various boards and commissions. Item B, appointments and resignations. One, resignation from the Police Fire Pension Board. Recommended action is to accept the resignation of John Allison from the Police Fire Pension Board and send a letter of thanks for his service to this board. Item C, communications. One, from the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority. Approval of Brownfield Redevelopment Authority bylaws. Recommended action is to approve the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority bylaws as presented. Two under communications is from the Sioux Chamber of Commerce. Consideration to replace the community organizations signed general located at the east side of I-75 business spur at Meridian Street intersection. And the recommended action is to approve the recommendations from city administration. Item D, city manager's report. One, award a bid for video redaction software for the police department. Recommended action is award the bid for the purchase of Ikena Spotlight Redaction Software from Motion DSP in the amount of $5,033.70. Item two under city manager's report is approval of a budget amendment for brick paver cross rock construction. Recommended action is to direct city administration to remove 8,000 from the fiscal year 1718 budget for this work through a future budget amendment and direct city administration to incorporate emergency repair expenses into fiscal year 1617 budget. 
Item three under the city manager's report is approval of traffic control order 17-02, no through trucks on West 14th Street, West 8th Avenue and Foss Street. Recommended action is to rescind traffic control order 98-1 and approve traffic control order 17-02. Item four is approval of non-emergency ambulance transfer billing agreement with Upper Peninsula Commission for Area Progress. Recommended action is to approve the completion and signing of the Upper Peninsula Commission for Area Progress Agreement. And item five is authorization of purchase of generic time from Michigan Employees, Michigan Municipal Employees Retirement System, MERS by Wayne Morley. Recommended action is to approve a resolution authorizing the purchase of five years of generic time from MERS by Wayne Morley with the employee paying 100% of the estimated actuarial cost. Okay, thank you. Is there a commissioner like something further explain on the consent agenda? I understand uh, Commissioner Baker, uh, C2 was uh, of some concern that you wanted to uh, ask yeah. the city manager. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, the city attorney. Yeah, Mr. Canella, do I need to abstain from the vote on the chamber side? It's my understanding you're on the board of directors of the chamber Correct. of commerce, you should abstain. <coughs> Okay, then we Mr. would, um, in Mr. order Mayor. to, we would make that item number C2 would be our uh, first item after the consent agenda. Um, I Gage. also should abstain because I'm also on the board of the Chamber of Commerce. You're on, okay. So I will also abstain. Okay. Anyone else? So we have the consent agenda minus uh, item C2. Uh, Commissioner Bauer. So move that we pass the consent agenda minus item C2. Supported. Then move supported. Are there any questions? Roll we'll call, please. Mayor Bospis? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And we will go to uh, item uh, C2 on the consent agenda, which would be the Sioux Chamber of Commerce and the uh, relocation uh, of the uh, organizational sign on I State 5 Business Firm. So we have a motion, Commissioner Twardy. I still move that we approve. Uh, C2. Support. <laughs> it's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bospis? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item 4, Special Orders of Business. A, appointment of Commissioner Abby Baker as Commission Liaison to various boards and commissions. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. As the City Commission and City Administration welcome Commissioner Baker, it would be appropriate for the City Commission to confirm the current list of City Commission liaisons and appointments to the various boards and committees of the City of Sault Ste. Marie. Importantly, former Commissioner Osterhout previously served on the Planning Commission, the Historical Development Commission, the Chippewa County Liaison Board, the Community Improvement Committee, formerly the Blight Committee, and the ad hoc committee supporting the development of a form-based code. As a note, the City Commission only has one representative or liaison on the Planning Commission and the Historical Development Commission. It has two representatives on the Chippewa County Liaison Board, the Community Improvement Committee, and the ad hoc committee supporting the development of a form-based code. Commissioner Tordy currently serves as the sole representative on the Chippewa County Liaison Board and the Community Improvement Committee and Commissioner Bauer currently serves as a sole representative on the ad hoc committee supporting the development of a form-based code. Accordingly, I am respectfully requesting that the Commission confirm appointments to the Planning Commission, the Historical Development Commission, in the Chippewa County Liaison Board, and additional representation to the Community Improvement Committee, as well as the ad hoc committee supporting the development of a form-based code. And additionally, for the Commission's awareness, this past weekend we received uh, from Commissioner Baker, her resignation from the DDA board on which she previously served and it would be appropriate if it's the pleasure of the commission to address this item at this time as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lynn. So move the city manager's recommendation Support. Uh, paper on the appointments. It's been moved supported. Uh, question, Commissioner Twardy. More of a comment. Uh, sure. I think, I actually think it's gonna be a really good thing having Commissioner Baker be on the community improvement committee and also on the ad hoc committee for the form-based code, since I feel like the, the two kind of overlap each other, um, since we are looking at specific zoning issues through blight. So congratulations for being a crossover on that. Okay. Any other comments? Maybe three times uh, a month. We have a motion to support. The roll call, please. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? 
Yes. Mayor Bastos. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Yes. Commissioner Bauer. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, item B under special orders of business is public hearing of necessity for sidewalk improvements SW-01-17. Okay, thank you. Uh, city Manager. Thank you, Mayor. On this matter, City Engineer Linda Vesista will present to the City Commission okay. and to the community. Evening, Linda. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, as you are aware, we've, we're in the second year, third, uh, third year of um, doing sidewalk replacement program. It's been a very successful program so far, and I don't expect any different for this program. Uh, this year, we, we are replacing, uh, plan to replace sidewalks. We're focusing in the, in the downtown. Uh, Justin uh, Nepper, DDA director, had asked for some improvements downtown. So we did do from Ashman, on Ashman, from Portage to the bridge, we looked at all of the sidewalk on that strip of Ashman and, um, and selected sidewalks along that, that route. We also are picking up a couple of uh, res few residential areas. One is on Valley um, because a resident had asked for um, improvement to approach to a, an alley which extended into the, into the sidewalk and uh, they were pleased with that. We're finishing up Fort Street uh, from uh, grow cap to uh, ridge, uh, kind of where we left off last year, and um, and then a small portion again on uh, I already mentioned Valley. So, oh, a small portion on Magazine uh, between Portage and uh, Emmeline, and that is uh, adjacent to the ice building. So we had a we held a public informational meeting on May 24th. For, and invited all of the property owners uh, affected by the sidewalk improvements. Three property owners were represented in, during that meeting, attended, and uh, as a result, there was only one, uh, also one change uh, that we made. Uh, the sidewalk in front of the ICE building had originally been an eight-foot sidewalk, and we were originally proposing to uh, put it back as eight-foot, but after talking to the representative of the, of the property owner and taking another look at it, we decided to uh, uh, make it six foot wide. Most sidewalks are five foot wide, but in that area there's already some six foot uh, wide sidewalks, so we've modified their proposed special assessment to six foot, and they are aware of that as well. So uh, all the notices were mailed out to the affected property owners. We did do a, a bid already for the for the construction and received a price of $7 uh, per square foot for four inch sidewalk and $9 per square foot for um, six inch sidewalk. It's a little higher than we've had in the past, uh, but because of the um, nature of the constructing downtown, I really ex did expect to see a higher price, especially for the six inch sidewalk. Um, but again, uh, three property owners attended the public information meeting, and I did not receive any other calls or questions prior to this public hearing. So I would ask that you uh, conduct a public public hearing to hear uh, on the, this is for on the necessity of the project, and then uh, after we go through this process, uh, public notices will be sent out to the property owners again again with the amount of their uh, proposed special assessment uh, where property owners pay 50 percent of the project cost the city pays 50 percent and the next set the date for the next roll hearing for the roll hearing which would uh, be set for monday june 19th to be held at, here at the city commission meeting and that would set the roll and then at that time at that meeting as well we'll ask you to approve the contract uh, with the successful uh, bidder for the project. So just a question before you do the public hearing. Um, how does the seven dollars and nine dollars, uh, is that a foot? That's, that's what we, we pay and the, the, then the uh, property owners pay 50 percent of that. Yes. Um, how does that compare to last year's rate? Last year's four inch sidewalk was five, five sixty, right around five sixty a square foot. And I'm sorry, I don't recall what the six-inch sidewalk was, but it was just a little higher, usually is. Okay. 
Thank you. So at this time, we'll hold a uh, public hearing of necessity on the proposed project for the sidewalk improvement pro project uh, SW-01-17. Yes, ma'am. Would you like to speak to that? Um, yeah, all right. Um, could you, so people can hear you at home, could you come over to the, and we'll, we'll bring the microphone down, but just so. Thank you. If you could give us your name for the record, we would appreciate it. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, my name is Sharon Kamundi. My husband and I, Stephen Rutledge, my husband, own 223 Ashman, and I got a estimate of a sidewalk replacement in front of our one building there. And the sidewalk does not really need replacement. And um, we really can't afford it right now. I've lost my renter and uh, who they were paying quite well, but now they're gone, Child and Family Services. Um, Anyway, I'd like to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Excluded. Released? Is, is it, what is it, Kathy? Excluded. It's excluded. 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 I can't hear you. Excluded. Oh, from, <laughs> from this replacement of sidewalk there. And if you'd like to see pictures of it, my husband has pictures. Oh, we can take camera. pictures too. Mm -hmm. we, we certainly can take pictures also uh, in yeah. the next. Any questions? Sure. Um, if you. If you could move the microphone up, because th this is for the folks at home listening. Yeah, okay. I, I forgot to even do that. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> I used to watch it on there, too. Thanks. Um, I can understand the crosswalks. The crosswalks are a mess. This actual, I can't believe you're actually wanting to replace the sidewalk in front of those buildings, because there's literally a f just two or three sections that are cracked, and even the pavers are in great shape. The little brick pavers that go along the edge, and then they've got the little tree planter and all that. The only bad spot, really, I mean, there's a couple of sections that need replacing, but the whole thing does not need to be all tore up and replaced. I know there are roads in the Sioux that need it seriously, but I don't see it as, in my opinion, I don't. I think it's a waste of time. I could maybe even ask Kathy what she thinks, since she has a building on that one too. And um, this, this, I agree, the crosswalks are just wiped out. They're those paver crosswalks. And your address is two twenty three. Actually, it's two two one through two two five, and that's three buildings. No, actually, it's two buildings, three addresses. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? The Anything street, else? Maple Street alongside the Zim's really needs Yeah, it's, it's pretty broke up okay. along the Zim's bar there. Oh, okay. But the sidewalk actually in front of our building is like, mm -hmm. it was replaced in what they called the streetscape. Yes. And I think it was 96 or 97. And uh, still looks pretty darn good. Okay. The only thing that I see is the curbs are pockmarked and they've been that way since they did it. Because I think it got too cold the night after they poured the curbs. Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? Who's he? I have to rebut the commandies a little bit, but they're my best pals. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the things uh, that's happening downtown, we've been having a lot of trip hazards uh, that are starting to come up, especially the sidewalks are about 20 years old. Certainly I understand uh, based on property owner participation, certain areas may not be able to be addressed right away, but we have uh, areas all throughout Ashman Street and on Portage where there are, um, where the cracks, the, where the sidewalk portions butt up against each other, there's like a triangle 
that is breaking out um, all over the place. It's kind of like a systemic issue, and those are uh, we've tried to fill them with um, some sort of patch patching over the years, but uh, the patching crumbles in the winter, gets caught by the sidewalk plows, um, and the the streetscape is over 20 years old, I believe. It's starting to show some wear and tear. Uh, so what I'm hoping is that we can, to a certain extent, limp the streetscape through for a number of years to come by doing uh, upgrades. The, the brick paver crosswalks lasted for over, I think, over 20 years with limited, if no, replacement. And so uh, that lasted quite a bit. We got those fixed, and they're still, well, they're in, in the process of getting fixed. But I, I do hope that many of our property owners downtown are, are willing to look at the hardest part about uh, replacing the downtown sidewalks is the squares, the sidewalk squares are quite large, and there is only a very small portion that's, that's crumbling uh, throughout the, the downtown. But if we cut them, cut new cracks or joints in areas, uh, they, it just looks funky. It's, it doesn't line up. It, it takes away from kind of the, the streetscape style that was originally put together. So, um, well, I, I guess from my angle, if there are certain property owners that uh, would like to be excluded, I hope that they would consider in future years, there are probably areas that we could address with some patching to, to hold us over. Will the commission will talk at, after the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Any, um, if you have a question, I guess you have a question of uh, Commissioner Gage? You have a question or just a comment? No? Okay, let's wait until after. Thank you. Actually, I have a question. You have a question? Of, Mr. Uh, Justin. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm seeing a lot of these pictures and I can't really discern which of these pictures are in front of the Rutledge uh, Kamundi building. Because I see in front of the hub, and I see in front of House of Bargains and Magazine, et cetera. But I don't see anything that looks like it's in front of their building. But from what I hear you saying um, is that despite the fact that maybe the sidewalk in front of their building may not be too bad, that if we piecemeal it and do like this section but not their section and do another section, then you're afraid that that's going to look bad. Is that oh, right? Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Uh, to I think that would be all right. I guess I just wanted to express the, the importance of understanding that the there's very limited ways when you walk down the sidewalk, you won't see major cracks or or heaving too much. But what you'll see is these small triangles that have crumbled and broken out where the sidewalks meet the brick pavers. Uh, and and there's really no way to replace that, that. There's no way to properly address that without replacing an entire slab of sidewalk uh, from what I've seen unless we... Uh, put in kind of oddly shaped joints and, and whatnot. It starts looking like um, a patchwork. So, Okay, so in that case, um, the sidewalk itself is not the issue. It's where it meets the pavers at that point. Is that what you're saying? I, I guess in, in a nutshell, I'm saying I just wanted to speak to the importance of, of how we fix the sidewalk uh, sections that we need to address, hopefully many of these over time, some of them can wait, probably uh, in front of their building can wait for a future year, but I do hope that, uh, that both property owners and the commission understands that there's limited ways to replace the, the sidewalks where there are small cracks without doing the whole thing if we want to re retain the integrity of our streetscape design. Does that make sense? Okay, if I could ask a question sure. of Linda Vasista. Are you familiar with the, all the pictures that are up here? Because some of them don't go. Uh, it with looks the like links. to me, it looks like 320 might be there, right, Commissioner Barr? Uh, photo 320 Ashman yeah, Street. I'm not, I'm not. I don't have the pictures with me. Okay. The one with the handrail. That's Huntington. That's it. Huntington's yeah, that's oh, Huntington. That's Huntington. No, it's, oh, it's 215. The one with the steps going down. It's right after the, um, yeah, you know, the public hearing of Sessie, and then there's one photo 215, the next one 320, and then 320. The third, the third one. It's got the handrail coming down with the step. Yeah, I know, but that, that photo is really Because there's Zim's right there in the background. This is in front of um, Hans Financial. Sure. That one. Oh, I okay. mean, as long as they'll allow it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, as long as you have. I think I have it right here, though. If it's the one with the cracks that are pretty wide and uh, yeah. uh, at the scene. Yeah, that, that's what I have. I think. 
Hmm. Let me, if, if I can see that. I, I was going to say, can you show that to uh, Mayor Bosmas? <clears throat> if I can see that. I, like I'm looking at the right one. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Is that it right there? I have several close ups of the papers. And oh, that looks pretty good right there. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're next to the. Um, you're next to the health food store. Right. Is that it? Is it? <coughs> you have a step down? You have a step? Yes. Yeah, it's right here, isn't it? No, we don't have that kind of step. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We one step. Different step. Okay. See, this okay. is. Actually, let me see if I'm wondering what you hear. I might be able to put that in. Okay, see if you can plug it in. Yeah, to the okay. overhead, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Still see if we can get that. Just take a minute while we... If you think it's okay, it's okay. more help coming <laughs> I just think it's that it's it's we can use this uh, the pictures for the public to see would be nice to have them on the screen you, have you ready to go to us yet sure but well we'll close that first we, we have we're gonna have another meeting of this right we'll have another public meeting uh, th thank you, Mayor. If this were to move forward tonight, the final step in the process would be the confirmation of the special assessment role. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, so there would be a, another, another uh, a chance for the public to address us. Okay. I would. Yes. Okay. Okay. Why don't, why don't we? Um, there will be another. No, <clears throat> excuse me. There will be another chance at the next meeting. Also, but. I would think that if if, if we could, um, those that, I mean, sidewalks are almost as expensive as roadways. We've we've talked about that several times. But if we um, maybe tell the city engineer if we can do a patch and make it look appropriate, we would consider some of that. Uh, Since they're large sidewalk can, pieces. Based on the information that's been received, we can certainly follow up with the property owner. Okay. I'll plan to meet. I'll plan to meet them and, and take a look at it myself okay. and with Justin, and okay. then we'll come back at the next for the public hearing with a recommendation as to whether or not <clears throat> we recommend they still be included or be removed from the role. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then, as a side note. The crosswalks, a few of the crosswalks are getting to be in pretty rough shape, and maybe we got to take a look at taking the brick out of them and maybe cement and then stamp the cement with a different color. Might, might, if that would, if that would maybe keep them a little bit more level because they're a tra they're a walking hazard. Yeah. You, would you, uh, sure, Justin, you want to come up one more time? No. Justin. Have you looked into that at all? I mean, we're kind of getting off this a little off the track from sidewalk. No, just a quick note on that. If you look at the intersection of Portage and Ashman, we've actually already reconstructed uh, that crosswalk completely. Um, it's pretty much, it's brand new. And it's, uh, from everything we can tell, it's in great shape. So if you drive across that right on the corner of Portage and Ashman, that was one that was completely destroyed. Um, that should last for uh, quite a long time. And it was only $7,000 to redo the, it was $7,200 to redo the entire downtown crosswalks uh, in terms of brick so it was substantially more affordable and what's supposed to be happening this week 
Um, as a matter of fact, tomorrow night it's scheduled for patching in all of the missing bricks all the way to Dawson Street, which is the okay. final brick crosswalk. So, so okay. you should see um, all of those uh, gaps and holes being completely gone by the end of the week. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for the update. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in discussions with the City Attorney on this particular parcel, uh, if the Commission wishes to move forward with it, it would adopt the resolution ordering the public improvements and schedule the public hearing to confirm the special assessment role for Monday, June 19th. However, there would also be a separate motion if the Commission is inclined to adopt it to table the necessity on this specific parcel that has been questioned to the next meeting as well. So there's a couple of... Okay, a tabling motion would take pre precedence. Uh, Commissioner Bauer. I would then move to table the um, decision on the uh, Rutledge Community property. Support. Support. Okay, that's the, that's the necessity we're talking about at that point? Okay. The hearing, the hearing of necessity? Okay. Everybody understand the motion? Okay. Any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Vospis? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Then there's a second. Item five is communications A from Mayor Vospis, City Manager Performance Evaluation Committee report. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Yeah, we still need a second motion. A second sorry. motion. Okay. For the last item. Commissioner Gage? I would so move the manager's recommendation on the second motion. Support. Support. It's been moved supported. Everyone understand the motion? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bosmas? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Commissioner Twardy? Yeah, thank you. I just, there was a couple of points that I wanted to bring up. Uh, first of all, I am, I'm Stefan and Sharon's neighbor, and I, I can't even, in my mind, I can't think that those sidewalks, because I ride my bike a lot, and I know you're wheeling a lot, because um, you're a wheelie. Um, so I, I really can't see that it's that bad of a street. Now, Sharon had brought up a really good point. When you, when you turn the corner around Zim's on Maple Street between Ashman and Border Patrol, that is a really bad section right there. And so I could see maybe leaving the areas on Ashman alone and going around the corner where there's huge gaps in the sidewalk. And I, I do have to be careful when I'm riding my bike along there that I'm not gonna take a digger. So being in mind of our handicapped people in town, I think it's, we should be concentrating and focusing on the worst first and then coming to the ones that are least impactful, maybe last, okay. is my thought. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to item, uh, under commun five, under communication, again. From Mayor Bospa, City Manager, Performance Evaluation Committee report. Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, at this time, uh, we'll just, uh, Commissioner Bauer and Commissioner Gage and myself um, compiled and, and looked at each of the uh, commission's uh, completed instruments on the evaluation, the tool that, uh, uh, of, of our City Manager, Oliver Turner. And we met on the, um, I believe it was May 8th, and um, reviewed the results of that. And we had, as a committee, wanted to bring these recommendations to the full city commission. And there are just a number of them, I'll, I'll go over those. Um, again, um, before we start, uh, just saying that how fortunate we are um, as a commission to have uh, with us uh, our uh, city manager, Oliver Turner. He's, he continues to do an exceptional job for the city starting his third year. And um, we'll go through the recommendation. I'll give Commissioners uh, Bauer and uh, Gage a chance to speak also. Item number one, the City Commission adopt the following mutually agreed upon goals for the fourth year, for the fourth year of the City Manager's employment with the City of Sault Ste. Marie. A, the Manager will continue meeting with the public biannually at the Bayless Public Library or at an alternative venue. B, the Manager will present a Manager's recommended budget for each fiscal year in which the minimum unrestricted fund balance is at the upper end of 15 to 20 percent range. Established by the city's fund balance policy and adopted by the city commission on December 2nd, uh, 2013. C, the manager will make progress in completing goals established by the commission through its annual goal setting session. D, under one, uh, the manager will obtain an overall evaluation score aggregate for all commissioners serving for each year of employment, that is, 
at or above four on the evaluation instrument, and there's a, a rating from one to five. And um, this manager on all, and, and we'll get to that on all of the categories uh, to combined scored a 4.91 out of five, which is exceptional. And um, I know he's pretty happy about that, and we as a commissioner are, are certainly also very happy. Uh, item number two is that at the, the vacation provided the city manager be increased from four weeks per uh, annum to five weeks per annum. Importantly, it was requested by the city manager and agreed upon by the evaluation committee that the salary, annual salary of the city manager be increased in a manner that is consistent with how the wages of the bargaining unit employees are increased and to wait on any salary increase for the city manager until successor collective bargaining agreements are agreed upon between the city and bargaining units with which is engaged in the collective bargaining process at this time. And finally, it should be noted that in accordance with the contract language approved in 2016, the employment agreement, which will extend an additional year for the employment agreement to have a, a new five-year term that would run through June uh, 2022 for uh, City Manager Oliver Turner. Um, again, and we talked about the score, and at this time I'd, I'd ask the uh, committee members, uh, starting with Commissioner Gay, uh, Bauer, to uh, any comments that you'd like to make. Uh, this is not the first time that I've been on this specific committee, and as I said to Oliver Turner during the last meeting of this nature, uh, I try not to give grades that are so exceedingly high that they can't be improved upon. But in this uh, particular instance, in trying to find fault and really trying you know, on a point-by-point -point basis to give him a lower grade here or there just so we can have room for improvement just gave myself a headache basically because uh, it, it's tough to find fault with Oliver Turner with the work that he has done uh, his communication skills his work ethic his thoughtfulness his leadership abilities and not in that particular order are outstanding I think that we really found a good one uh, and lucked out when we were smart enough to hire Oliver Turner to succeed Spencer, ne or actually to succeed Robin Troyer, I should say, as city manager. But, um, you know, the extra, the extra week of vacation, I don't know what good that's gonna do him because I know that he works over <laughs> vacation anyway. So, there you go. But uh, that's basically all I have to say. And I was going to, before I get to Commissioner Gage, I was going to mention that we extend another week. Uh, the recommendation is to extend another week to the fifth week for uh, his, his annual uh, vacation time. And he sleeps with his phone almost because uh, he really doesn't uh, ever get very far from being in contact with any of us if, if we need to get a hold of him. So, and we, and we do appreciate that. Uh, Commissioner Gage. I certainly want to echo the, the sentiments of Commissioner Bauer and, and Mayor Bospis. Um, you know, this is my first time serving on the Manager's Evaluation Committee. and. It's been an honor and a pleasure to work with Oliver. Um, I really look forward to uh, seeing the great things he's able to do with the rest of his, his time here. And it's funny, one of the things I joke about the most is um, in looking at the scores of the various commissioners, I actually gave him the lowest score, and I feel really bad about that. I gave him an average of, I think, 4.8, and I was the lowest by far. Um, yeah, and it, it is difficult. I, I totally understand what you're saying, Commissioner Bauer, that it is difficult to find anything to suggest for him to improve because I'm not convinced that you're not just a city manager robot <laughs> and that you just are a machine that just gets things done so um, it's it's been uh, it's fantastic and and here's to you thank you, thank you. Sure. so um, with that we would uh, there's a recommendation before the Commission uh, Commissioner Twardy yeah thank you um, I move that we would respect respectfully request that the City Commission take action to receive the findings of the City Manager Performance Evaluation Committee, approve the presented extension to the employment agreement between the City of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan and Oliver K. Turner as presented and approve the recommendation of the Evaluation Committee regarding compensation as presented. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Just Mr. Bauer. One comment. comment. I'm, I thank you, Commissioner Tuardi, for not saying so move the city manager's recommendation because that really would not have looked good. I know, I, it, that crossed my mind, but then I thought, no, I better not do that. Uh, Anyone else? Just, yeah, just a quick comment. Sure. Thank you. Um, coming from somebody who is also turning out to be kind of a workaholic and I'm married to a man who is definitely a workaholic, 
the only suggestions that I always say to Oliver, and I know that he's very mindful when he does this, is that he needs to make, I, I'm always concerned that he makes enough time for his, his wife and his two beautiful daughters, and I know that he absolutely does do that, but that's the only thing that I ever, ever suggest to him, is just make sure that you're taking care of that lovely family of yours. Thank you. Okay. Good comments. Anyone else? Commissioner Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing about a city manager. When he's done at 5 o'clock, he takes it home with him. And I'm sure Oliver, during the night, has woken up worrying about whatever the emergency or whatever it is is going on. And I'm sure he wakes up early thinking about what he's got to do to solve that problem and other problems. It's an extremely tough job. And I actually gave Oliver a nickname one night. It's Wally. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> but we're, we're very, very lucky, fortunate to have Oliver Turner as our city manager. OK, thank you. So we have a motion in support. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bowsmith? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Motion carried, and our city manager would like to say a word. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. I certainly appreciate those comments, and uh, certainly um, public service is a lifestyle choice. It's one that I'm excited to be in Sault Ste. Marie. I'm excited to be, uh, continue to be part of an amazing team with great employees and great department heads. Uh, we function well as a team and to work for this commission, and especially to be a part of this community. Over the past three years, it's been incredibly welcoming to myself and my family, and it's meant a whole lot. So I appreciate the opportunity and look forward to uh, continuing to serve the city. For many years. Thank you. I hope so, <laughs> yes, I hope so. <coughs> Thank you, yeah. Screw up one time, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Item B under communications is from the Michigan Department of Transportation. Update on 2018 construction activities, the I-75 business spur and roundabout. Okay, city manager. Thank you, Mayor. With us tonight, we have uh, Don Gustafson, who is the Michigan Department of Transportation uh, Newberry Transportation Service Center Manager to present to us about the uh, spur and roundabout project. Great. Evening, Don. Nice Good to evening. see you again. Nice to see you again, too. Thanks for coming. You're very welcome. I'm kind of here to answer questions, too, and uh, do whatever I can for you guys. So I've got a presentation here, but if I'm derailing and not giving you what you want, please feel free to let me know and ask any questions, okay? Sure. Thank you. Is it? Yeah. It is? Okay, good. Good. Okay. I'm assuming. Nope. There we go. Thank you. This is kind of a diagram, one of our early preliminary designs when we added in the sidewalks recently too. So you can kind of see that the final plans are almost at completion right now. Um, we're trying to work on getting a cost estimate to see where we stand with costs. But this picture kind of gives you a detail of the roundabout portion of the project. Now there is three parts to this project and it runs all the way from the freeway up until the end or the start of the last reconstruct that we had. So down at the bottom of the hill by Easter's Day. So it's that entire portion of it right now is what's in the project. This is just the roundabout piece. And the blue lines that you see are the sidewalks, the dark royal blue ones. And then you can see where the new lanes within the roundabout and where the circle's gonna fall. So the objective here was to take and tie in, three mile is off on the kind of the right hand side of the screen, you've got Mackinac Trail coming in from the bottom, and then the business spur is kind of the left screen and then off on the top. So that kind of gives you a little bit of an orientation. And this is just an overview. So there's just a quick question before you leave yep. that, because yep. all that pavement that's presently the curve of the business spur, that will become green space? Correct. Correct, that will all be removed and turned into green space. Okay. <clears throat> There's also, excuse me, <clears throat> if you look at the pink line up on the top, um, kind of right in front of the state police post, can you see a pink trail through there? That is the bike path that's there right now. So there'll be some modifications made to that, and I'll go into that a little bit further here too, but it, you can see where that pink line is the bike path that's going to stay in there, and then that pavement will all be removed and replaced with green grass. 
is it is my only question was it is it actually wide enough because um, it does from this picture when you notice the area that hit and I'm, I'm certainly not an engineer but I the amount of traffic in there I'm sure you've taken all that into consideration yes. that yes it's not very it's not very large it is still two lanes um, okay. and then the roundabout itself is also two lanes so okay. it is a fairly good sized roundabout it's not a small one it's not and I mean when I say good sized it's not huge like this we try yeah. to keep them smaller to keep traffic speed slower but you've still got two lanes a lot of roundabouts with this lower volumes are only one lane so okay. you only have one circle around the outside this one ha will have two if so we compare have two those lanes. to the ones in, in Marquette are those two lane also Ishpeming is okay. um, and Harvey almost is Harvey has one piece of it that's one lane the as you come in to go downtown, instead of going downtown, go out, this piece yeah. is one lane. Um, okay. there, so there's a portion of it that's one lane. And that's all based on volumes. It's all engineered sure. based on how many vehicles you have coming in in each leg. Okay. And so then they engineer how many lanes you need. Thank you. Yep. Some of the significance of this project is that it's higher volume ADTs. So there's a lot of traffic out there. It's kind of the gateway into Sault Ste. Marie. And there's a lot of retail out there in that corridor. It's also the Lake Huron Circle Tour route, and it's also a bike route, BR35, and that runs from Mackinac Trail to Meridian Street on the business spur itself. So that's just some of the uh, stats off the road you guys probably know. Here's some of the funding stuff, and this truly is a partnership. Um, the city had approved some money when we discussed the roundabout, and the roundabout cost is a quarter, the city's putting in a quarter of the cost of the roundabout, and then MDOT's paying the other three quarters. And then MDOT is also putting in $4.75 million for the I-75 to M129 piece. So from here to here, and then from the 129 piece, then on up to 10th Street, we're putting in $500,000. And then the roundabout's got $1.26 million in traffic and safety funding. And then there's also some non-motorized discretionary money that we were enabled, we were able to get. Um, it's through a TAP grant, and it's $200,000, and that is to create new bike path. There is also money put in from the city that's going to do some rehabilitation of the bike path that's out there. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, when you're done. Okay. 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 I can tell you just. <laughs> um, there is also some money in there to rehabilitate some of the existing bike path that's in poor condition, and also some of the areas where the driveways are going to have to be moving. We are doing some access management, which means reducing driveways down as much as we possibly can. So instead of one business having three drives, they might end up with two. Um, so there's some of that going on. So that all has an impact to the bike path. So some of the money will be used to do that type of stuff, and then some of it's for brand new. And then the city's also adding in some sidewalk um, to make connections. So the connection will come all the way down to the Walmart, as I showed you in the very first picture. Um, you can see the, the blue is the sidewalk coming all the way down. So it'll come all the way down to the roundabout. It'll actually get people across and through the roundabout. So it'll move people all the way from south of the roundabout up to downtown. Yeah, Commissioner Twardy? Yep. Um, is that going to be on the roadway or will it be a completely separate pathway and will it be marked with the signage BR35? It'll be on the roadway, but the bike path is there also. So people have the option to do either or. If they're comfortable with riding in the road, they can, but the bike path will also be there so that if, they don't, if they're families, young kids, um, some of the more serious bikers may choose to ride in the lane. We've heard that comment that people would prefer to be in with the cars, um, and then there's people that are, don't put me there. So in, in portions of this project, you'll have an option. And then you'll have the sidewalk, too, even if you don't have the bike path itself. Yes, and we've met with them, yep. Um, we have that bike friendly Sioux group in town and this is one of the areas that they've been really concerned with so the fact that we will actually have a bike lane is there going to be a bike lane will it be <laughs> it's marked? not a bike lane they are legally allowed to ride in the lane of traffic okay. so they can it's two lanes out there so there's two lanes of traffic and they're legally allowed to ride in the lane of traffic Will the, will the markings of, with BR35 be anywhere out there? Will there be any signs? The signs, yes. There okay. will not be pavement markings on okay. the roadway, but okay. there will be signs, yes. Okay. Yep. okay. Is there any okay. way to incorporate any sort of... Any way to incorporate bike lanes? Not within the roadway. Okay. Um, that's why the bike path is there. It's the safest, best alternative is to keep people off of the road. Okay. So if people really want to ride within traffic, they can do that. We're not forbidding it. It's legal. 
Um, but we are providing a safer alternative, which is riding on the bike path itself. That's okay. why we're investing the money into the bike path is because that's a, a safer alternative. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? So in total, that's about a $7 million total project. Again, this was all engineered estimate money. Um, we are in the final stages right now of figuring out how accurate this is and how close we're going to come with the actual design. And there's also some water main in the roundabout area that the city needs to replace. And that'll all get done so that it doesn't, we don't have to disturb the area again later. So some of the needs of the project. The top picture here will show you some of the water. And I'm sure I'm telling you guys things you already know. Um, there's some drainage issues out there. That'll all be fixed. Um, there's been some flooding on the road that won't happen after construction, hopefully. That's the goal. Um, the bottom picture, you can kind of see it's just a Google Earth snapshot. And if you go back Google Earth, whatever years you want to pick, this is kind of a typical scene you're going to see. Now, this is just an average day. This is not a 4 o'clock rush hour or a holiday weekend. And you can see the cars stacking up on the little leg that kind of connects um, the business route with 3 Mile. So Mac Trail kind of comes into 3 Mile or three mile comes into Mac Trail and then Mac Trail continues on up into the business spur. The idea of the roundabout is to get this traffic moving better and more safely, um, eliminating a lot of the conflict points. Every intersection you've got many, multiple conflict points here that are going to all be eliminated with a roundabout. So it truly is the safest, best option at this location. We did a study, which I may have in here too. There was a study done by the city and then also one done by MDOT. Here we go. And we um, looked at the, the safety needs of this area. And by far, the roundabout came out with the highest level of service, which is a flow, basically, of traffic, a level of service. So if you have an A, it it's, keeps traffic moving. If you have an E, you're in gridlock. So the roundabout will allow traffic to re maintain a level of service A at all times. 2006, the city did a traffic study. In 2014, MDOT did a road safety audit. Both of those kind of pointed towards a roundabout as being the ideal fix at this location. And we're also looking at mitigating a lot of the driveway access points that I told you before. We're trying to combine drives if we can, um, consolidate things. Every extra drive you have, you more conflict points too, along with the bike route. We also had issues and complaints of the bike path crossing multiple driveways. And so by minimizing the access points, that was enabling us to uh, lessen those conflict points with bikes also. So that was another consideration. This is some of the stakeholders. This project's been taken probably three years so far, pretty steady. We've been working on it. And these are everybody we've been working with, um, the city, Oliver, Linda. Everybody's been great to work with. Kelly's done some help, helped us out quite a bit. Um, it's been a lot of different things as far as looking at the different entities. I mean, we've talked about bike paths and things, but there's the water, the sewer, the, the driveways. Everything is very, very time consuming. And um, we did have some conversation of the bike issues at the far south end of the project where the new Myers went in and that bridge is not wide enough to support bikes and so we've even had some conversations with Bike Friendly Sue on alternatives and things that we might be able to, the city might be able to look at or other people might be able to look at to connect into until MDOT replaces that bridge. Um, it will be several years for that bridge to get replaced so it's not a, not a short term project. Some of the benefits um, is improving the traffic operations. These are all things I've kind of hit on already. Better pedestrian access, uh, the aesthetic value. The roundabout will be able to plant stuff. I'll show you some stuff here. You'll be able to plant stuff in the middle. It'll look nice. Um, it's kind of like a gateway into your community. And of course, the Amish too. I mean, we, we have the Amish community that's impacted by this. And in the five lane section, they ride just as a bike would in that right lane. Um, and they will be able to use the roundabout. Again, the roundabout is two lanes. so. They'll be able to come into their, and it's low speeds, you know, usually roundabouts 20 miles an hour or less. So it's real low speed, so it's fairly safe for them too. Some of the landscaping stuff. Now, this is just a typical view that I can give you of how a car would come in and then some of the landscape, what this landscaping might look like when it's done. And these are some of the typical plants that we've placed in land. Yep. Can I request that we put a statue of Mayor Bospis in the middle of the landscape? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I'd ask. <laughs> these, are, these are some of the, the plants that we have typically used. We've done, uh, we've talked about the Harvey roundabout and the uh, Ishpeming roundabout. Um, it was, so we, we've designed a few of them here in the UP now, and then we have lots of them downstate. So these are just some of the typical plants that we have placed in them. Of course, this is all uh, open to final uh, design, too. So 
This is kind of the layout, kind of gives you a feel for the lanes too, as we talked about before. In the center there, it kind of looks like there's only one lane, that's actually two. So you, it, doesn't, it does not have the hash marks to make it into two lanes, but it is actually a two lane roundabout. And you can see the sidewalks on there too. And we always cross the pedestrians out farther on the legs before they come into the roundabout. And as a pedestrian, you go all the way around the roundabout. And it'll tie up to both the sidewalks and the bike paths. This is the uh, truck apron, an apron and what it'll look like. A truck apron is basically an area in the center of the circle that allows trucks to be able to pass through the roundabout because they're wider, longer, they need a wider turn. And so they'll come in and they may take up, it is not designed to, for instance, drive two trucks side by side through this area. You could not do it. It's not physically possible. Most people are smart enough if they see a semi truck, they're not going to pull out next to it. Um, we've never had issues with trucks in there. Again, it's really low speed, so they're safe. Um, and most people will yield and give a semi truck. And of course, coming into the circle, everybody yields. So the semis just kind of wait their turn, get into the circle and go around. And as they go around, if they are in the inside and they need this truck apron, the truck can actually go up on this apron. It's a little bit of a lift, but it'll slide right up and the trucks will actually ride around. And we had concerns with logging trucks in snow and we just have not seen an issue at all. These are the same truck aprons that would have been on Harvey and in Ishpeming too. We had a windmill, actually a windmill piece, go through the Ishpeming one, and boy, there was some nervous, uh, there was a lot of chaos over that one. Is it going to work? Is it going <laughs> to? But it was just fine. They, they were going straight through, so it wasn't as hard as spinning all the way around the roundabout. But they were passing through to go north on 41, and they were able to get the windmill piece right through the truck, just round up, rode up on this truck apron, and right back out he went. This is the bike path and this kind of shows the poor condition that some of it's in and so then this will all be replaced under the portion of money that's coming from the city to replace some of the bike path that's out there. Um, the tap grant that we got does have to be used on brand new path unfortunately so that's where we'll use if we have to replace stuff or if we're going to add any um, in the roundabout area that type of stuff will all be used with the new tap grant. And this area just shows a picture, a typical area of where the sidewalk's going to be added. You can kind of see the little bike trail, goat path there, uh, the cattle trail. That'll end up getting sidewalk. Like I say, you'll be able to walk all the way down to uh, the Walmart now. Here's one picture of the maintaining traffic. We do not have all the traffic details done yet. We're still trying to make it all fit in there. In this situation, we're actually fortunate enough that the roundabout footbed, if I go back to the first one, a lot of it does not fall in the existing roadway. So we talked about removing that chunk of road. So in this case, we're pretty fortunate. It's, it is actually fairly easy, and that's the way the Ishpeming one was built, to build half of the roundabout and then build the other half. And you put traffic on it and work your way through, and then you build this half. In this scenario, it's actually very convenient because we can build the entire roundabout without end up impacting the spur traffic. Now having said that, at times we're going to impact the Mackinac Trail and the three mile traffic and we're trying to minimize that right now and trying to find ways that we can, there might be periods of a week or something where we're going to have to try to detour traffic, maybe build a uh, temporary lane of some sort to get people around. And that's what this picture here will kind of show you a little bit. You can see here the grade area is just kind of graying it out so that you can't see any of it. So the traffic's going to be up on the top part of the page, on the top part of that gray area. You'll have both lanes of traffic and then you see the little um, street coming in like that. That's where Three Mile and Mac Trail is going to come in. And so it'll have an in and out lane, so two lanes, one each direction coming down. It'll connect to both Mac Trail and Three Mile. So that this is just one stage. There'll probably be, if I had to guess, four to six traffic stages and this is just one of them. We're doing the best we can. This is being, I'm getting into that here pretty quick here too. We're trying the best we can to minimize the impact here. There's the 350th celebration is in the same year. So we're fully aware of that. We're doing everything we can to minimize the impact to the community and the, the motorists, the visitors. I mean, people that are not familiar with the area too. We do have a welcome center here in town. And we've always, as part of our communication plan, we've talked with them and we're, we're set up ready to do brochures for, you know, what's the best way to get into town, to get downtown, you know, maybe you're better off getting into Easter Day or coming in three miles at different times. Um, 
So we're working on trying to get some bit different brochures put together. We will be having public meetings. We've always got the MyDrive Active website. I don't know if anybody uses the MyDrive app or not, but it's an app put out by MDOT. Just Google MyDrive, and it's an awesome app. You can get even camera images off our weather cameras all across the UP. So you can see what the weather's doing in Harvey or Twin Lakes or wherever you want to go. You can see what's happening with the weather, but you can get all of our construction projects and things like that. So any notices or alerts that we need to get out to the public, we can push there. We also use the social media. We have a very active Twitter account. Dan Weingarten is our communications rep here, and he lives right. He lives in Ishpeming in the UP. Does an excellent job. So he has an active Twitter account, and we also have the Facebook. But it's a Michigan Department Facebook, so it's the the greater good of all of MDOT, um, the whole state. So usually that's set for more of the major things. Um, so there, if there was a major impact or something, or if the public meetings, the public meetings are always posted on Facebook. But the Twitter account really will have like more of a day-to-day -day type of activity if needed. And that the 350th celebration, um, this was just one of the things we talked about. It, it's an important community event here, and we're trying, we have a list of events. We're trying to coordinate what we have as far as our maintaining traffic and where we're impacting things. We're trying to minimize it and coordinate with those events the best that we can, and we will continue to do that. So as the contractor comes on site, if, if we are having issues, we'll be able to mo adjust and modify the best we can to, to meet the needs of the community. And that's all I really had put together. Right, any questions of Don? Okay. Thank you very much. Excellent. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Item C under communications is from Department of Interior Bureau of Indi Indian Affairs. Notice of non-gaming land acquisition application. Okay. Thank you. City Manager Turner. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> On May 25th, City Administration received the two included notices of non-gaming land acquisition applications from the United States Department of Interior Bureau of Indian Affairs informing the city that the Sault Ste. Marie Tribe of Chippewa Indians has made application to place land situated within the city as highlighted with in included materials into trust. The first notice pertains to three separate parcels. As indicated by the notice, these parcels are located in close proximity to Bawading Charter School and are, in total, approximately 3.2 acres in size and further would be placed into trust to increase the tribe's land base. Parcels within this general vicinity have been placed in trust status recently, with the letter of support being issued by the City of Sault Ste. Marie to the Bureau of Indian Affairs on the same. A PDF highlighting the location of these parcels has been included for review by the Commission and Community. The second notice pertains to a parcel with tax ID number 17051304-1500. As indicated by the notice, this parcel is less than one acre in size and is located in close proximity to the Tribal Health Center. It is fully developed with a one-story office building and insulated and heated two-car garage. Sioux Tribe staff uh, has indicated that this property is currently being used by the tribe for its advocacy resource center which is a direct service program providing voluntary assistance and support to victims and survivors and their children. A PDF highlighting the location of this parcel has also been <coughs> included with the materials. Upon the review of the existing trust land agreement between the Sioux tribe and the city it has been determined that the parcel covered under the second notice would be utilized by the tribe in support of essential governmental services. In regards to the parcels covered by the first reference notice, these parcels are covered under the scope of the agreement and its agreed upon boundaries as being appropriate for trust status. Furthermore, the City Commission representatives serving on the Sioux Tribe and City Liaison Committee have previously concurred that the property is appropriate for trust status. City Attorney Canelo has additionally expressed no concerns to the subject parcels being placed in the trust. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission authorize City Administration to send a communication to the Department of Interior, Bureau of Indian Affairs expressing support for the applications made by the Sioux Tribe to place the referenced properties into trust. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lynn. Your Honor, so move the City Manager's recommendation. Support. support. It's been moved. Support. Are there any questions? Uh, we'll call the Mayor Vospis. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Yes. Commissioner Bauer. Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Item D under communications is from Mr. Jason McLeod. Request for mid-block streetlight. Okay. Thank you. Uh, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. 
As commissioners are aware, city administration has been approached by citizen Jason McLeod regarding the installation of a mid-block streetlight on Brown Street between West Easterday Avenue and a portion of Brown Street where it branches into Helen Street. In response to Mr. McLeod's request, a number of alternatives were evaluated by the city, Cloverland, and Mr. McLeod. Specifically, the parties considered the installation of an outdoor protective light, a light that can be installed by Cloverland for the benefit of a private property owner without the involvement of the city. This type of lighting structure could be mounted on a pole but would shine onto a private property rather than into the road right-of-way. Mr. McLeod has expressed an interest in a light that shines into the roadway. As a result, the city, Cloverland, and Mr. McLeod evaluated the possibility of installing a street light that would shine into the road. Currently, Cloverland maintains a policy that street lights must be installed by a local unit of government and has indicated that it cannot separately bill a private property owner for such street lights. The cost of such a light for a 100 watt sodium vapor light is currently about $8.90 per month, exclusive of any installation charges. From an organizational standpoint, the city engineer does receive periodic requests for the installation of mid-block streetlights. Specific standards are applied to determine if additional street lighting is warranted. Such standards are also useful in that the city does not incrementally assume ongoing structural costs each year due to the installation of additional street lighting. In this instance, a review of Mr. McLeod's request using established and historically applied criteria would not result in the city ordering an additional street light. However, during this review, it was also noted that the city does not have an additional avenue to accommodate citizen requests for the installation of mid-block streetlights whenever these requests arise. Research conducted indicates that it is not uncommon for municipalities to maintain such policies, with private property owners paying for the costs associated with the installation of such streetlights and the operation and maintenance of the same. Importantly, Mr. McLeod has offered to pay for all costs associated with his request for mid-block street light in this area. If the city were to work with Mr. McLeod on the installation of the street light pending commission approval, it could finalize it on an administrative basis, likely through an agreement to be executed by the city and Mr. McLeod. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the city commission first direct city administration to work with Mr. McLeod on the installation of a mid-block street light as requested by Mr. McLeod, pending feedback received from adjoining property owners with the condition that Mr. McLeod and or other current and future property owners assume the cost of the mid-block streetlight and secondarily direct city administration to develop a policy regarding citizen requests made for the installation of additional street lighting in conjunction with Cloverland as necessary and appropriate. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Okay, thank you. There are uh, two recommendations in discussion with the city attorney. That is one motion. Uh, Commissioner Bauer. Question for the city attorney as I am working with Jason McLeod on the um, establishment of the Little Italy Festival in that neighborhood. Must I refrain from commentary and voting on this issue? I see no uh, reason for you to abstain. Ooh, Therefore, it would be required that you vote. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, thanks. Um, and before we do that, um, a motion. Uh, uh, the, at this time, uh, Mr. McLeod would like to make a few comments, I think. This is the item that you raised your hand for? Okay. Was this the item that you raised your hand so. to speak? Yes. Okay. Oh. Down in my area down there where I'm developing, we have a void of darkness and that has been a perpetual problem since I've owned the properties. And we've had to go to interesting measures to try and bring it to heal. Um, We've had seven police incidents down in the area, in the area of darkness in question here. Um, I've tried every avenue that I can go through. We've done neighborhood, neighborhood watches, which have panned out with multiple arrests. Uh, some that's not because even the alley behind my homes are, is unlit. So it's like trying to catch a frog through like a mask. You know, you can't get it. They're, if As soon as they commit a crime, they're through the house into the alley. It's very difficult to track them. So sometimes we've caught people doing things that we haven't actually been able to catch them for. So I would like to, and the street light that I'm asking for isn't even in front of my own home. I'm just doing it for the benefit of the people that are living in my neighborhood. My tenants are parking out on the street. We've had tires uh, slashed. Some people don't even report it to the officers. We've had tires slashed, we've had windows knocked out, we've had cars broken into multiple times. Just last week I've had a, uh, 
a couple pieces of um, block removed from my house and taken down, we can't see anybody. So I have a home that's uh, that I can put a lamp on the back to situate in the alley area, but I can't do anything for the front. And there are other options that have been discussed with me, like the light that can be put over top of the sidewalk. But like Mr. Nepper, I am interested in the continuity of uh, aesthetics, and I could tape a flashlight to it too. But at the same time, I'd like to have my area look, you know, presentable and, and not kind of cobbled together, you know, because sinking a lot of money into the aesthetics of the area having a, a, a light that shines at a home that isn't mine in their windows is not something that i'm really interested in pursuing so i, I have a question i think the is the location of this uh particular light is that near the decking that you um that you had built no sir it's it's down further a little bit uh, down the road probably about 150 feet and you said there's been seven police incidents yes where you um, so it's just primarily just dark down that way. Um, oh, horrendously. Uh, yeah, um, when you go down there, they can't, people can't even see you when they drive by. Commissioner Gage has been down there for a few times where we've, we've played games where his wife would drive by and they're like, tell us when you see us. Is, is this <laughs> any, is a length, I guess I have to see this, is a length of the, or the distance from light to light, is that um, the same distance all over the city? I, uh, on this question, Mayor, would defer to City Engineer Basista if she'd like to speak to the specific standards. That I just don't know why there's such a dark area there and maybe not dark areas in other places. Is it because the curve. trees are so high that they don't have There's any a tree growing into the next light, and it's also around a curve. So there's Superior Vending, which is the big yellow building. So as you're coming around that curve, the light sticks out just ever so much and then there's a giant tree that's above it and even if it wasn't half the lights absorbed by it so i i just like to oh. okay i just i just don't know why that's so dark there and not other places yeah well traditionally the the street lights in this throughout the city are in the at the intersections with the exception of long um, you know double blocks or areas that are not necessarily platted with the normal street grid but in the normal residential street gridded areas uh, the street lights are typically at the intersections and so um, that that's been the standard and just as many people that request additional street lighting I get requests for people who want street lighting removed as well so uh, we try kind of try to stick with what we have and and stick with the, with the standard that we have. I guess do we take into account um, the number of police um, uh, calls? I have in the past um, when there's been requests like on a cul-de-sac and so forth um, where all of a sudden there's a higher c crime spree or so. but uh, when I've checked uh, it really isn't you know more than than uh, average or um, and so there might have just been a couple of incidences within a short period of time uh, without a pattern. Uh, so I don't know. I can't speak to the uh, incidences in this situation. Okay, thanks. thanks. It might, just from what I hear, I, I would say that if it's something that the city should be responsible for, um, if, if you're having an overabundance of, of, uh, of vandalism and it's in a dark area and it's something that the city should should look at maybe the city ought to review and take another look at that and it, I mean a hundred and some dollars a, a month it, it should be maybe something the city pays instead of you paying it but I I would think that it, if we want to include that now that does that does not open the door for everybody that needs a street light to come but I think when you look at the amount of police police um, uh, calls that have come in that area then maybe we ought to take a look at that before we go ahead and approve something that he's going to end up paying for the rest of the time he owns a property or the next person owns a property well, mr turner said that uh, he could only find two on record but i have seven videotapes so and i have names and dates of uh officers coming so uh when mr turner came and i showed him everything i asked would you want your family walking through here mm -hmm. and he said no uh, if it's not good for Mr. Turner's family, I can't imagine it being good for anybody else's family. So well, you 
from what I've seen, you've done a lot, you've done a lot in that whole neighborhood, mm -hmm. and you've done out of your own pocket uh, yeah. when you look at the different deckings and the groups that get together. I went by one night, and you had a bunch of folks out <coughs> in the middle of an, a darkened area, but you had lights that you provided. But um, mm -hmm. if it's something further down the road that you're trying to get people to yeah. be part of a community and it's not real safe, I, yeah. I don't see any problem yeah. with that. It's something it's that the city should consider. absolutely for safety purposes and being able to catch people when they do things, because right now, they can come and they can uh, they can hurt a car or vandalize a, a car oh, in in my area and be gone within by the time that you get up to the window to look to see what's out there. Okay, let's let some uh, Commissioner Gage. Um, I'm going to just real quick make a motion, then I make a few comments. Um, so I, I still move the manager's recommendation. Support. On this. Um, and then in regards to this light specifically, I have spent a, how many how long have we talked about this street light? A year and three quarters. Pretty much the entire time I've been on the commission. Mm -hmm. And I'm, he's not joking that one night, Lindsay and I, my wife and I practiced, challenged this. I stood off the, just off the sidewalk. My toes were touching it. And I asked my wife to drive down the sidewalk and I said, tell me when you can see me. I was on the phone with her. She couldn't see me until it was literally me to Kathy away. It's, mm -hmm. it's that bad. And um, uh, as a correction, you wouldn't be able to type, tape a flashlight up because <clears throat> as you're helping us demonstrate, the City Commission actually has jurisdiction over ambient light. So I'm happy that you're letting me exercise my authority as a City Commissioner over regulating ambient light in this community. Um, this is a prime example, a very prime example, of why we need to be a community of yes, because he's been working on this for over two years. And here we've got a guy with using his own money to redevelop a neighborhood that has, has historically been a problem area using his own money, offering to pay for the own, his own street light, for God's sakes. And he still had to wait for two years. So I'm really happy we're voting on this tonight. I'm really happy we're getting it done. But for God's sakes, can we get it done faster next time? Because this is, this is ridiculous. Thank you. Uh, the motion is, is, what's the motion? We're not having him pay for his street light at this point. We're right. going to re well, yeah, we if, if we're going to table it to, to talk about us paying for it, then I'm fine with that. But okay. I'm fine approving this tonight as well. Yeah. Even, okay. even if it, sure. even legally, if I have to, I'd still like to. I mean, it's nice that, that it's being offered, but even if it's, even if legally we can't, I would still like to pay for it. Okay. Yeah, if it comes down to a point where, where you don't think it's that necessary, but it sounds like it is necessary, and I would think that's something that we should do as a city, just make it part of our street. Uh, Cost at this point. Mm -hmm. um, well, do you want to include that in a motion? Yeah. I would include that in my motion. Okay. Yeah. okay. Everybody okay. understand the motion? It would be the city's cost. And, yep. Okay. So, so just for clarification, the city manager's recommendations. There's two separate recommendations. That can is all be not. One. That can all be one motion. Is that the mo Is that the commission's motion? It sure is. The commission's motion, I think, is that the city would pay for it, but then if the administration wants to develop a policy regarding those kind of things, does that make sense? City manager? Uh, I, yes, yeah, certainly understand that okay. motion if that's the commission's pleasure. Okay. Mm -hmm. been Commissioner Bauer? A couple quick comment? comments. Um, number one <coughs> is that I rented off of uh, Jason's parents there on the 800 block of Brown for a couple of years. <laughs> before I bought my house 20 years ago, and it was the same back then, and it hasn't gotten any better for sure. Um, and in fact, you know, crime, I think, patently across the United States, even in small towns such as ours, has uh, certainly gotten a little bit worse. Um, but that said, and two, and I'm all in favor of the light, and Jason knows that, and et cetera. Um, but in situations like this, I think it is very important for us to you know, get feedback from the people in the neighborhood to make sure that this is patently what they want. I can't imagine anyone who's there not wanting this, but I'm just you know, kind of playing the devil's advocate as I am wont to do, mm -hmm. that, you know, that we make sure that everyone in that neighborhood um, is behind this before we pull the trigger on it. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, everybody understand the motion? Yep. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bospis? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Item number six is the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. 
Item A under the City Manager's report would provide for the award of bids for the purchase of maintenance materials for the Department of Public Works for fiscal year 17-18. Annually, the Public Works Department bids out various bulk maintenance materials utilized during the course of the year by the Department, including gravel, sand, cold patch, and topsoil. The City received pricing from six vendors, and accordingly, it's the recommendation that the City Commission accept the bids from the following vendors for the following materials. For 6A crushed stone, northern sand and gravel, at $15.75 per ton, delivered, $12.50 per ton, picked up. For 22A gravel, Norris contracting at $12 per ton, delivered, and Fox aggregates at $6.50 per ton, picked up. For 23A gravel, northern sand and gravel at $12.50 per ton, delivered, $7.25 per ton, picked up. Class 2 fill sand, Norris contracting at $8 per yard, delivered, and Fox aggregates at $3 per yard picked up. Unclassified fill sand, Frank Pengator at $1.75 per yard picked up. Ice control sand, Norris contracting at $12 per ton delivered, $7 per ton picked up. And topsoil, Norris contracting at $12 per ton delivered, and $7 per ton picked up. And just to note that the price for the class fill 2 sand, as noted in Mr. Morrow's memorandum, came in at the same between Norris and Northern Sand and Gravel, and uh, Northern Sand and Gravel was selected as it maintains property within the city limits. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Geary. So move the city manager's recommendation. Support. Support. It's been moved support. Are there any questions? Commissioner. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Bauer. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. Commissioner Gary. Yes. Commissioner Lynn. Yes. Commissioner Twardy. Yes. Mayor Bospis. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item B under the city manager's report would provide for the award of a bid for downtown parking lot improvements. On this matter, DDA Director Justin Upper is planning to present to the city commission. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Justin. Hello again. Uh, a few years ago, the Parking Advisory Board uh, and the DDA Board, we did a walkthrough of all of the parking lots, many of which are city-owned, a few DDA-owned, and then we lease a number of parking lots from various um, property owners, uh, long-standing. Uh, we have about, we have 13 park, public parking lots downtown this uh, past year. A lot of them really are getting to the place where they needed major work. Uh, usually every other year we do a, the DDA board approves a crack sealing, striping, and seal coating um, uh, amount uh, around eight to $10,000 usually per, per every two years. And uh, this year there was so many places that were really breaking up. We, uh, to, to replace all of the parking lots that need full construction, that's on our long-term uh, capital improvement plan. We're looking at the lot behind um, the P4 lot on Court Street behind Barishes, that's uh, to the end of its useful life for the most part. Um, the Fire Hall lot, a number of others that we have to start really thinking about and budgeting for. But um, this year we uh, went out for sealed bid for uh, uh, a number of uh, repairs, including this crack sealing, seal coating, striping, cleaning, repairs to certain broken guardrails, uh, edge treatment, getting uh, grass and whatnot that was growing over the pavement uh, cleaned up. And um, so, all that being said, it came to around uh, 19, $20,000 uh, approximately. We had that in the parking fund uh, between a capital maintenance fund and a um, contracted services fund. And so the DDA board approved that um, major kind of uh, cleanup for the parking lots going into, especially going into 2018, really making sure our parking lots are looking as good as they can be based on what our budget allows. Okay, thank you. Uh Commissioner Baker. I'd like to make a motion to support the city manager's recommendation. Support. Or did she learn quick? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions? Thank you, Justin. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gage? Absolutely. Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bospis? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item C, under the city manager's <coughs> report, would provide approval of a proposal from C2AE to provide design services for the I-75 business for utility, utility replacements. City Engineer Basista is planning to present to oh, the commission on this matter. Okay. Linda. Hello again. 
Well, you know all about the I-75 business per project, so I don't have to do any background on that. So, uh, and as uh, Dawn had said during her presentation, we will be doing some utility replacements as part of the project, mainly um, due to the age of, of a lot of the utilities there, so that uh, as long as they're reconstructing the spur, we don't want to have to go in and, and do it again. It, uh, within a year or two to repair an old sewer or old water main. And within the roundabout, uh, obviously that now is in an area where, where there was not under the road and we do have a water main in there that is just too shallow to be old and too shallow to be uh, under a roadway. So uh, we've identified water and sewer to be replaced. Uh, we, I asked C2AE for a proposal to prepare the plans for the, for the replacements as it is it's a um, it's a small small kind of a small project. A lot of the time uh, and effort uh, will be done in coordination with MDOT by myself and doing the administration. But uh, we need the design done uh, by a consultant because MDOT uses MicroStation, which is a program that we do not utilize, and uh, nor do we have the capabilities to use. So, uh, ask C2AE for a proposal. Uh, they've given us a proposal to do the project at $27,000, and I would ask for your approval. Okay. City Manager, anything in addition? Uh, nothing further to add. Just appreciate the engineer's work on this project as well as uh, other staff. Okay. There are three recommendations? That's correct, Mayor. Okay. Yes. And in discussion with the city attorney, those are three separate motions. Uh, let's go to Commissioner Gary. Are we just, did we just do you? No. <coughs> Which uh, are the three? Well, because we had a um, question. See the three recommendations? Uh, so move the. Oh, there's one. Pardon? Pardon? No, there's one recommendation. My apologies. The recommendation is that the City Commission approve the proposal with C2AE in the amount of 27000 for the design of water and sewer utility replacements. Mm -hmm in conjunction with the MDOT I-75 oh. business for reconstruction project. Thank you. So move the recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> I was on support. the Oh, support. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, thought oh. I read the wrong package. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I was one ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bospis? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item D under City Manager's report would provide approval to amend an agreement for engineering services for a PFC overlay at Sanderson Field and award corresponding construction uh, work. On this matter, EDC Director Jeff Holt will present uh, to the City Commission. Okay. <laughs> That's, that's three. <laughs> this is one with three separate motions. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Um, as you're aware, we uh, budgeted $700,000 for the um, construction of the overlay on the airport uh, runway. And we we're very pleased that uh, both bids that we received came in under budget. And uh, we're, we're very pleased about that. And uh, the award has been um, awarded to uh, Payne and Dolan in the amount of $458,180. So the long and short of it is that uh, um, we will be, uh, uh, it will cost uh, out of TIFA 3 budget uh, $6,000 for the MDOT um, design cost, the 10% cost, and $45,000 for the cost of the construction of the airport. So 51900 some dollars so we're very pleased with that and then the uh, construction will start uh, in uh, probably the second week in August and it'll be about a, uh, a week maybe 10 days construction schedule to not interfere with uh, uh, travel uh, too much no, that's what I was so. gonna ask. any questions uh, Commissioner Jacordi thank you well will there always be some sort of a runway open no Okay, so there will be times when the entire airport is shut down. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And our EMS services are fully aware. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. That's why it's a. Uh, they'll be they'll be really really 
sticking on on a tight schedule okay. and, and their understanding of that and uh, we've already put the word out uh, to all of our travel uh, folks that you know don't come here the second week of august because yeah. uh we'll have some we'll have some challenges okay so all any, right thank you okay any other questions uh commissioner uh, bauer uh, those are three separate motions yes so move the commission authorize the city manager to execute QOE's contract amendment as presented for the construction engineering work on this project in the amount of $60,972 with the local match being 10% of this cost of $6,097.20. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? A roll call, please. Commissioner Lynn. Yes. Commissioner Torty. Yes. Mayor Bassfus. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Yes. Commissioner Bauer. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. Commissioner Gary. Yes. Motion carried, uh, Commissioner Bauer. I also move that the commission approve the award of the PFC overlay construction project to Payne and Dolan per MDOT uh, Arrow's recommendation in the amount of $458,180, with the local match being 10% of this which is $45,818. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Torty. Yes. Mayor Bospis. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Yes. Commissioner Bauer. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. Commissioner Gary. Yes. Commissioner Lynn. Yes. Motion carried, uh, Commissioner Bauer. And finally, I move that the commission authorize the city manager to execute related project documents. Support. It's been moved supported. Uh, uh, roll call, please. Mayor Baspis? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item E under the city manager's report would provide for the acceptance of the Michigan Department of Transportation transportation work authorization for trunk line maintenance. As noted within the materials in February, MDOT issued a transportation work authorization in the amount of $10,000 for the Department of Public Works to make repairs to the road surfaces on trunk lines including East Portage, Ashman, M129, and the Business Spur. Due to the extremely poor condition of the Business Spur, MDOT has increased its authorization by an additional $20,000 to bring it to a total of $30,000. These funds would be used primarily in spray patching the Business Spur and additional cold patching. This work would help keep the spur in serviceable condition until it's completely rebuilt in the 2018 construction season. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission accept the Michigan Department of Transportation transportation work authorization in the amount of $30,000 to cover costs associated with the Department of Public Works performing road maintenance on state trunk lines. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Twardy. Thank you. I move that the City Commi Commission accept the MDOT transportation work authorization in the amount of $30,000 to cover costs associated with the Department of Public Works performing road maintenance on state trunk lines. Support. Support. Are there any questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Baspas? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. That concludes the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Item number seven is the status report. Thank you, Mayor. Item A under status reports is an update regarding the citywide cleanup. Mary Jo Duvall with Sue Events is here tonight to provide the update. Okay, evening, Mary Jo. Good evening, everyone. Um, I thought that it went great for the first year that I was able to help out with it. Um, we had pretty decent weather, weather for it, so that was actually nice. Um, we have approximately about 130 people that joined us for our picnic that day. And I'd also like to give a shout out to all of our local businesses that helped sponsor the event and that was able to make it happen for us. That would be War Memorial Hospital, Lock City Home Center, uh, Parker Hardware, Waste Management, and Cloverland Electric. They were the ones who were able to supply us with um, the dumpster, the garbage bags, and the gloves for everybody. Also, I'd like to include a thank you to the local businesses who helped um, donate prizes for our picnic that day. And the first one is the Sear, uh, Sears, who had donated a grill, Maloney's Alley, Palace Saloon, Pure Country, Domino's Pizza, Zach's Fudge, and Alpine Chocolate House. They all donated either gift certificates or prizes for it. Um, the best that I could figure out, because not everybody registers, but I believe we had approximately about 160 volunteers out there. So I think that is absolutely amazing 
for our community for everyone to step up and um, get out there and get things cleaned up. Um, the approximate weight from waste management and also the city street department is we had just, oh, or I'm sorry, I put my glasses on for this one. <laughs> just remember, we had just under a thousand pounds of garbage that was cleaned up, and that is up from last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great job. Any questions? No. Just a All comment right. that uh, thank you very much for for coordinating that. You're welcome. And, um, it was a, it was a was a very nice day. We've been there when we've been rained on, and, uh, <laughs> freezing the, temperatures. Uh, the commissioners and and certainly the citizens for showing up, and uh, the youth. A lot of a lot of uh, youth were also involved in that. A lot of youth were out and, there. Uh, yes, and they had a chance to uh, see the new uh, or the renovated pavilion at the uh, Sherman Park, and it's it's really came out really nice. I think we're gonna maybe work on the lighting um, on on the. Um, on the porch out in front, but the porch great? is done, the steps are done, and, and people using it uh, really appreciate uh, that it's been renovated. So Yeah, and I great. also like to thank um, our chefs that day. We had Baba Tor, Joe Claxton, and Judge Eric yes. um, in attendance that day, and also their families came mm -hmm. and um, helped clean up, and it was a great day. I great. really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Also, on all of your chairs, I left you one of the um, T-shirts, so thank you. Commission yourself for out getting out there and cleaning up that morning. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Gage. Uh, my two favorite young people that were out cleaning up trash was uh, Brody Baker, uh, Abby's son, who was, did a great job. It was, uh, was great. And then um, Josh Gary, uh, who was there yes. in, instead of his father. And he did, he did more work than Don would have done anyway. So, <laughs> so it, was, it was a delight. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. Item B, under status reports, is a 2017 construction update and report. In this matter, we again welcome City Engineer Basista. She's busy. <laughs> Place it on file. Again. Let's see. <laughs> My presentation will be faster than it takes for me to load it up. <laughs> So as you know, 2017 construction has already started this year um, with uh, the final paving of the uh, CSO roads. Uh, that was finished on Friday. But uh, I'd just like to show everybody this is an overall 2017 construction map. It is, also, it is found on our uh, city website at www.suecity.com. Uh, and as I just said, final paving was completed Friday on Johnston, Kimball, Cary, Dawson, Lyon, Spruce, and St. James Street. So that wraps up the uh, CSO C3 project as well as the CSO program. Uh, we'll, final striping will be done on uh, East Spruce. Hmm, that is, was supposed to be today, but now we're hearing that they'll be here on Thursday or Friday. Um, and then the uh, crosswalks and so forth will be added as, at that time too. Uh, we've already talked about sidewalks. Uh, we're doing Ash, portions of Ashman downtown from Power Canal to Portage Avenue. There's some on Valley Street, uh, some on Fort, some on Magazine, and I omitted the, there's also one square sidewalk in front of Carl's Cuisine. Now, uh, now we have the projects that are going to impact traffic. Uh, for the uh, for this season construction season and there's only two uh, East Spruce reconstruction from Tyson to Easter Day uh, that is uh, complete reconstruction will be replacing water main in that portion some folks will re uh, recall that 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 was in the CSO uh, program at one time so there was some work done at that time though the the work was just um, uh, the utility trenches uh, and the road was not reconstructed at that time and as a result this is typical of our poor soils you go on a roller coaster ride when you drive down that road so we're going to replace whatever water main was not replaced uh, before and totally reconstruct that street this is an MDOT uh, funded partially MDOT funded project is federal aid and so it's MDOT bid uh, that'll be bid in July, and so we expect uh, construction to start in August. 
Also under the same schedule? Have um, yeah, I have a question on that, uh, just because I'm, I run all over town, as you know. Um, what's going to happen to the sidewalks on that section? Because there are portions where on the north side of the street there aren't any sidewalks, and then on the south side it's way up on that hill for portions. Yep, so, so we're not doing a lot of sidewalk work okay. in that project. Uh, for what you just said, there's some areas that do not have sidewalk. Um, at some point we may finish this, uh, complete the sidewalks in that area, but doesn't not part of this project. And um, will we have to reconstruct the crosswalks, the ramps um, for uh, ADA compliance, handicap accessible compliance, because it is federal aid funded, so we always have to do that, receiving federal aid. But otherwise, the only sidewalks that will get replaced or changed will be as a result of any utility work we have to do. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, West 4th Avenue reconstruction from Hyde to Ash. Um, it, it's uh, that the curve around 4th Avenue and it's in desperate need of replacement. So we will be reconstructing that. Uh, Hyde is where the curb and gutter ends currently. And uh, so that's where we'll pick up with re total reconstruction, adding curb and gutter and ending at I don't know if you want to call it Oak. It's just beyond Ash Street. It's where, again, the curb and gutter picks up. So there's a section of 4th Avenue with no curb and gutter and, and asphalt on the side as a pathway. Now, we originally set out to do this project uh, with, with a, a separated pathway. Uh, but unfortunately, once we got into design and, and started investigating the right-of-way, we did not have enough right-of-way to do that. I know that the bicycle, uh, bicycles are a concern with that um, curve and so forth. So what we will be doing during this reconstruction project is we are adding uh, dedicated bike lanes in both directions. Uh, for for bicyclists, but it will leave out sidewalk. We don't have enough right away for sidewalk. We will uh, pursue getting right away from the railroad. That's who we would need it from on the north side, and uh, and then follow that up perhaps next year with sidewalk to fill the gap because there is no sidewalk in that sure. section. Good. So you can expect to see me come back um, next year with a sidewalk project after we obtain the railroad right away. Uh, trying to obtain the railroad right away w with doing it as an MDOT bid project is almost impossible. It, it just takes too much time. And that as project long as is... As long as you're talking about 4th Avenue, I think just a comment. Um, if you haven't driven down that road in a while, it's bricking up and it won't be done until uh, later on this, this summer. So, right. Uh, um, I understand that'll it's on be the, bid in July as well, and, and start it's, on in the, August. it's on the patcher's schedule that we will patch that area. That's pretty they're going to fill in the the uh, that, potholes. No, with the with the actual patch with the patcher, which may last until at least it be reconstructed, because um, it's really tearing up um, uh, and breaking away. So that if you're driving in there, and there's a lot of traffic that comes from the west side of town and from the shallows and the uh, Lakeshore area that use that roadway so that if we can, they, they shouldn't have to go over that kind of a roadway for the whole summer and then have it, you know, it's going to be done, but if we can alleviate some of that, and I think the, the patcher's been scheduled out there, so the sooner the better. Okay. And uh, that's it for 2017. We'll, we'll be doing, we're, we'll be busy. Uh, we're, as MDOT said, as Don said, working with MDOT on getting ready for the 2018 construction, and we're still busy with uh, SOG, the SOG activities, investigating mm -hmm. manholes and so forth. So, but construction-wise, it's uh, kind of a light year. Well, later year than CSO work, vice or overflow work. Yeah. But <laughs> okay, it still goes on. Thank you. You're welcome. So that concludes the uh, status report section, section of the agenda. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Item number eight, matters presented by the public. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment at this time? Okay, hearing none, item number nine, matters presented by the City Commission. Uh, Commissioner Gage. 
or Commissioner like Kathy? Commissioner Twardy. I'm sorry, Commissioner Twardy. Thank you, yes. I was actually going to toss it over to you because I know that we had some higher ups at Sioux Locks the other day, which uh, mm -hmm. starting to really grain, gain some momentum, hopefully, and uh, I thought maybe you could give an update. Just that, um, and, and I wasn't able to be there, but uh, ultimately it was a sort of a private gathering of uh, political folks uh, for federal um, legislators were in the area looking at the lock project again. Um, it's continuing to, to get attention and, and hopefully going forward um, there will be something that will be within the next several years. It, I know they were talking about once it is funded it's going to be part of 18 month to two year before you actually see um, equipment moving. But hopefully uh, as, as continue and momentum uh, continues to build on, on the lock project, um, <clears throat> excuse me, It'll be, it'll be something that uh, will go on in this community for, for many years if, if it is funded and we're all certainly pushing uh, whatever we can do to um, make sure that that does happen in the near future. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay. Anyway. Commissioner Gage. All right. Um, Mayor and commissioners and members of the community, it is with a heavy heart that I announce my resignation from the Sault Ste. Marie City Commission effective June 19th, 2017. I have always enjoyed my job serving the constituents of Sault Ste. Marie, and I'm excited to continue my work on their behalf in my new role as UP Regional Manager for United States Senator Debbie Stabenow. This is a tremendous opportunity for me, and it's an exciting thing. Uh, Senator Stabenow has always been a great defender of the Upper Peninsula and of the Great Lakes. Throughout my time on the commission, I've come to truly love and respect the unique and creative people of this community. I want to first and foremost thank City Manager Oliver Turner for all of his guidance throughout my tenure. Ollie has been a tremendous force for good in this community, and he's been a personal friend. I next want to thank the staff of the City of Sault Ste. Marie who worked tirelessly to make our community a great place to live and work. I truly appreciate them working with me on behalf of the residents and the constituents. Next, I want to thank the City of Sault Ste. Marie City Commission for their support and friendship. Serving on this commission has taught me that politics and government does not have to be a game of power and position, and that people with opposing viewpoints can find consensus when it's important for the community. I want to thank my wife, Lindsay, who has been with me throughout this amazing journey. She's been patient, loving, and understanding of my need to attend events, late night meetings, and to take countless phone calls. Finally, I want to thank the residents of Sault Ste. Marie for putting their faith in me to serve on their behalf as a Sault Ste. Marie City Commissioner. I first ran for the election in 2009 as a 19-year-old who just wanted to help his community. And in fact, I saw today that um, actually not eight years ago today was the day that I made my announcement speech as a candidate running for city commission in 2009. So nine or eight years ago today, as we sit here, that was when I first announced. Um, although I did not win that election, Commissioner Bauer smoked me, <coughs> I consider it an honor that I was able to earn the trust of the community and to serve them the, these past two years. With this in mind, I hope the citizens of Sault Ste. Marie understand that while I will no longer be serving them on this commission, I will never stop fighting for our community and for the Upper Peninsula. Thank you. Well, um, certainly on behalf of the commission, uh, we have another vacancy, but, um, <laughs> but uh, it's certainly um, uh, something that you know, I, I'm sure you're going to excel at. Um, it's just a start for Jay, I think. Uh, other, other things just on that too, now that I'm done reading my, my official statement sure. and stuff. Um, it's been fantastic. You know, I, I uh, got the job offer on Friday and kind of took the weekend to, to talk it over with Lindsay. Um, it helped because I told them, you know, my wife is a little bit hesitant. She loves the Sioux. We want to go to Marquette. Senator Stabenow actually called my wife and said, you know, we really want Jay. So, you know, please, you know, we need to borrow your husband and we need him to work for us and things like that. So um, it certainly is a tremendous opportunity. Um, I, I know that I'm going to be working with this community quite a bit. What they want me to do is to work with every community um, and to see what their needs are. So it's, it's not that I'm leaving. I'm going to have to move to Marquette. Barf. Um, but uh, it'll be like uh, working for the community in a different capacity. So, so and when is that effective? So my first day working for the Senate will be June 19th. Wow. So for the, for the commission's sake, when will you have June a letter? June 19th is the effective date of my... June 19th? Yeah. Okay. And I still get to vote tomorrow at the joint meeting with the Yes, we're, we are meeting. In fact, uh, 
We are meeting tomorrow in Sioux, Ontario with the jo a joint meeting between the City of Sioux St. Mary Ontario Council and the City Commission. Again, I believe this is the fourth, fourth time that we've done this in the public and uh, we're going to begin at 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, and it'll be again in the, in the City Hall in Sioux, Ontario. But uh, getting back to, to Jay, we, we certainly on behalf of the Commission wish you well. I'm sure we're going to be in discussions with Jay over um, maybe in Marquette, maybe in the Sioux, but uh, um, he's in a key position uh, that will really benefit our community and, and um, the ties that he has in this community will only benefit us going forward. So. Um, it's a great opportunity for him. Yeah. Commissioner Lynn. I just get him trained. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been, yeah. it's really, uh, I hate to see you go. I really do. I really am, but I understand. Yeah. You know, it's your career. But uh, how he's matured, matured since he first got on here, you've come a long way. You still have a long way to go, all right? <laughs> but uh, it's been absolutely great working with you. Mr. Tory. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm in complete shock. How'd you keep that from me it all weekend? I know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm very, I'm very, very sad, but maybe it's going to take a lot of stress off my back because now I can quit pretending that I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it's mutual. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, getting back. We, uh, we've got to go through this again with oh, interviews well, and, and all this My stuff. feeling is that we, we've interviewed a number of candidates. You've got enough um, candidates, correct. Um, yeah, okay. And, and it, should, it should go fairly quick, I would think. But somebody's got to garner four votes, so we'll put it on the agenda next meeting. <laughs> okay. We need a motion. So he's got one more meeting left then? I, I will more than likely not no. attend. This is, a, this is your last meeting? City manager, okay. City manager want to comment on that? Uh, thank you. The city attorney may correct me, however, based on the last, most recent uh, <coughs> resignation, it's my understanding that the commission would accept it at the next regular meeting. I, I do want to ask one favor, though. I know that it's your thing, but oh, you want just this one time. <laughs> you may adjourn the meeting, oh. okay? City attorney, you have any comment? No comment. No comment. Mr. Gage. Your Honor, I motion to adjourn this meeting. Support. Support. All those in favor, seeing by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>